and welcome back to another episode of Cocktails with Kira. My name is Kira, and I'm a whiskey loving Irish gal who's on a cocktail voyage of discovery. If you are new here, I have zero professional bar experience other than a passion for making mixed drinks at home and showing you how I do it. So hit that subscribe button, stick around, and we both just might learn something because if I can do it, you can do it. So keeping in with the theme of the cocktail voyage of discovery, today's cocktail is another one that I have never made before and it's also one I have never tried before. So today I am going to be making for the first time an aviation. I would also like to say a huge thank you to one of my lovely patrons, Sam Gabriel, for requesting that I make the aviation. He also purchased me the items for the cocktail from my Amazon wish list, um, which I've been getting a lot of interest in. And unfortunately, the whole importing of alcohol in through the Amazon wish list doesn't seem to be working anymore. So I think I've kind of figured out an alternative. So if you are interested in that and you are looking at choosing a cocktail that I make here on this channel, then I will leave all the info for that down in the description below. So before before we get into the history of an aviation cocktail and I show you how I make it at home for the first time, I would like to take a second to tell you about my Patreon. Not only is it a great way of supporting my channel, but you can also have access to exclusive content. You can join in on my monthly live streams with my Patreon community and you can see the footage that is just too tipsy for YouTube. So without further ado, let's get into the history of an aviation cocktail. So the aviation is a great example of a pre-prohibition cocktail and it dates all the way back to the turn of the 20th century. Apparently it was called the aviation because of its beautiful sky blue hue. It really is such a pretty cocktail to look at, but also it was born at the beginning of the aviation industry itself when it was such a glamorous concept and air travel itself was something that only, you know, the rich could afford. It was really a luxury. So this drink was basically celebrating that. It first appeared in the collection recipes for mixed drinks in 1916, but in further decades, it was almost completely forgotten about because around the 1960s, one of its key ingredients, which is creme de violette or creme de violet, was impossible to get your hands on. So the drink completely dwindled. But now that that ingredient is significantly easier to find, the aviation cocktail has come back into popularity once again. So now that I've given you a little bit of history on the aviation cocktail, let's get into its ingredients. So as you may have guessed, the aviation is a gin based cocktail. So you can start with your gin of choice. I have a Blackwater small batch Irish gin here, which I've actually not tried yet. It's a London dry gin, and I think it's gonna be really, really nice. And you can obviously use whatever gin you prefer. I know obviously there is the aviation gin of Ryan Reynolds fame. Have tried that before and I do really like it, but I want to try this one out today. So along with your gin of choice, we are also going to be using an ingredient that I am so excited to be using for the first time and to have my hands on finally. This is the Luxardo Maraschino Liqueur. If you watch this channel, it is probably no surprise to you that I am more than a little bit obsessed with the Luxardo Maraschino cherries. They are my absolute favorite. I love them. So I am so curious to taste this. If it is similar to the cherry syrup, I'm assuming it can't be that sweet. So very excited to be using this. And then another very exciting ingredient that is one of the key components in the color of the beautiful aviation cocktail is of course the gorgeous creme de violette or creme de violet, however you want to pronounce it. Again, I have not tried this. I do not know what it tastes like. Could be very sweet. I'm not sure. I'm kind of thinking it might taste a little bit similar to to an elderflower liqueur, but I have to say the color is very exciting. So I cannot wait to use this. And along with those three ingredients, we are also going to be using some fresh lemon juice for this drink. And then finally for our garnish, we are of course gonna be using some Luxardo Maraschino cherries, which I'm always very excited to include. The color and look of this cocktail, I absolutely love, but I'm wondering, is this going to be too sweet for my liking? Um, I'm obviously gonna go in with an open mind, very curious to see how all of this works together Together, but without rambling on too much, let's get into actually making this cocktail. So when you're starting the construction of an aviation, you first must decide if you are going to shake or stir this cocktail. Now I have seen arguments for both. It seems that the color of this drink is at its most beautiful when the cocktail is stirred and you often hear arguments about gin being stirred so as not to bruise the gin. However, because this cocktail does have fresh lemon juice in it, you would assume that you would shake it. So whatever you decide is absolutely fine. We won't get our knickers in a twist about it. If you want to shake it, that's cool. If you want to stir it, that's cool too. Okay, so I've just 
just popped some ice in my mixing glass and we're gonna go ahead and start with our gin. Ooh. But I'm gonna go in with 60 mils straight in on top of our ice. Ooh, it started coming out the sides there. So that is roughly 22 mils of fresh lemon juice. Again, I hope not shaking this isn't gonna mess up the lemon juice, but we're just gonna go with it. So now we're gonna go in with the maraschino liqueur, which as I said, I'm very, very excited about. Oh, it has a really interesting smell. I'm just gonna have to try this. It's really interesting. It definitely has a sweet aftertaste, but it's that nice, subtle, deeper sweet. It's exactly what I love about the Maraschino cherry syrup, even though that's obviously way sweeter. I really like this. So we are doing 15 mils of our Maraschino liqueur. And then for our creme de violette, we are going to be doing, I think it's approximately 7.5 mils. I think it's a quarter of an ounce. But again, I actually really wanna try this. Oh, wow. It smells like perfume. Wow, it's actually really mild and soft and really smooth. It's not at all what I expected. Okay, I'm actually really impressed with that. It's not too sweet at all. So I'm gonna do 7.5 mils. I mean, I'm kind of eyeballing this. Okay, so that is all of our ingredients. Our drink has kind of a pale lilac hue to it. I was hoping it would be a lot more blue, but we'll give it a stir and see what happens. Okay, so considering that stirring it hasn't really maintained the purple color, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just shake it because I'm gonna be straining it afterwards anyway, so I'm gonna give it a quick shake and see if that makes a difference. Let's quickly tip this into the shaker. I know this is probably blasphemy, but look, this is just a voyage of discovery, so it's fine. And I'm gonna give it just a quick shake. So we have our coupe glass ready, which has been chilling nicely. And then we're just gonna go ahead and strain this in. The color is absolutely beautiful. It's very much a cloudy lilac. I was really hoping it would be much bolder. So from what I'm seeing in photographs, it seems like it is a single cherry garnish, um, which looks very beautiful and minimal. So although I would love to put four to five cherries on it, I'm just going to be reserved and stick with that. So let me just try and get some of the excess cherry syrup off and then I will just rest this on top of the glass. <gasps> it looks very chic. Our aviation cocktail is done. I must say it looks really beautiful. It's a very classy, chic looking cocktail. More importantly, how does it actually taste? Is it gonna to be too sweet for me? I know sometimes I might not be the biggest fan of gin cocktails, but this looks incredible. So if you will join me over on my cocktail drinking chair, let's try her and see how she tastes. So I am back in my cocktail drinking chair. I have my aviation here. I am very excited to try it. I'm just gonna go ahead and put my <laughs> cherry in the glass because it's going to fall. Cheers. There's a really nice subtle kick to it, which I like. That's enjoyable. Wow, it's really not what I expected. It's not at all as sweet as I would have initially thought, but actually it's really, really well balanced. It's like mild and refreshing and floral but not overbearingly floral sitting outside on a little terrace with someone enjoying a little catch up in the you know first few months of spring summer it's just very much that kind of vibe it's very good i have to say though i am a little bit disappointed about the color it's not as blue or as purple as i would have imagined um, and considering i used the creme de violette i'm just kind of wondering maybe did i not use enough if you are a fan of aviations and it seems to be quite a popular cocktail so i'm sure some of you are how do you make it at home how do you get the beautiful blue or lilac color is there something that i'm not doing right please do let me know because i love hearing how you make your cocktails so it's that time in the video where i get to sit back enjoy my cocktail and answer some questions from my Patreon community. So I have a question here from Cemetery Fox and he says, would you consider indulging your earthier side and maybe create some shots? I feel like what I would deem would be an appropriate shot would probably be rocket fuel or poison of some sort. So I don't know if I would trust my judgment. I feel like I would just mix all of the strongest spirits that I have and call that a shot. So I don't know if I would be the best person to concoct them. Creating them myself, I think would be a recipe for disaster. 
disaster. So I hope you enjoyed watching me make an aviation cocktail for the first time. And again, a huge thank you to my lovely patron, Sam Gabriel, for not only suggesting that I make this cocktail, but also for supplying me with the ingredients needed for it. So I was so, so delighted I will be using them in a lot of other videos. And again, if you're interested in choosing one of the cocktails that I make here on this channel, I'm always open to your suggestions. You can leave me a comment below letting me know what you would like to see me make next, or if you would like to supply some of the spirits or anything like that, I have all the info for how to do that in the description below. If you liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you have not already, then be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every single week and I would love to have you back for more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on my next one. Cheers.